Hey everyone, welcome back. Today in this video, we're gonna have a look at this alternator, which is controlled by PCM through Linbus. As you guys may know, Linbus is local interconnect network, which is a low speed network that is used on many different locations on the car. So on this car, on this Ford, I have this alternator controlled through the Linbus. If something happens to that Linbus, you may have charging problem and PCM cannot communicate with alternator anymore. So generally PCM uses that lean bus to communicate with the voltage regulator inside the alternator for the desired voltage set point. And of course that lean is used for reporting the load and error condition to the PCM as well. Generally that voltage set point is calculated by the PCM and communicated to the voltage regulator by the lean bus based on the needs of the vehicle and the operating conditions. Of course, that lean bus is used for the communication and normally lean initiates charging from the PCM. Alternator may continue charging even if there is any problem detected on the lean bus. So for that, we're gonna have a look at the scan tool at the very beginning to see what sort of fault code we have and what would be the voltage generated by this alternator when lean bus is down. Then we're going to have a look at the wiring diagram to locate that lean bus on the charging system diagram. And after that, I'm going to set up the oscilloscope to read the waveform on the lean bus on this car. Because when you are doing the diagnosis on network, checking the oscilloscope and reading the waveform is always really, really important and helpful. So we're going to start by checking the charging system with the scan tool. Before that, if you guys haven't subscribed the channel yet, please don't forget to subscribe. You can also find our online courses on udemy.com and of course the links for our online courses are in this video description. All right, let's have a look at the car and to the scan tool at the very beginning to see what we can get from it. As you see, engine is running, but battery light is on. Let's see what we can get from the scan tool. If I go for engine. So as you see this code, U0120 missing communication with generator control module. So this one is actually representing a fault code on the lane bus because as I explained earlier, on this car, PCM controls the operation of the alternator to the network and that network is lean bus. So when you have any problem on the lean bus, first of all, ECM doesn't have any control on it anymore. It's gonna set this fault code for you. And let's go back to the data stream. So as you see, alternator is still charging. It's charging 14.2, but your battery light is on because the communication is not happening. So this is for the fail safe condition. If the communication between PCM and alternator is not there anymore, alternator still can provide the charge. So we already see the alternator is providing the charge more than 14 volts, but we have the limb bus error problem. So that's why we need to locate the limb bus to read the waveform and to see what we can get from it. Let's have a look at the wiring diagram. What you see right down the screen is the wiring diagram for charging system exactly for this car. So as you see, this one is the alternator and we have the PCM or engine control module right here. That single wire that you see is the lean bus, which is connected between the PCM and alternator. And as you see, that lean bus goes all the way to the regulator, voltage regulator inside the alternator. Lean bus is actually a single wire network, which is used for many different applications. We have some videos on the channel for the lean bus, some of them explaining the lean bus, on some of them you see different applications of the lean bus as well. So generally this single wire network consists of a master and multiple slaves. In this case, we have only one slave node, which is alternator, and the master node is PCM. So PCM is the one requesting the information and regulating the lean bus speed and slave node is going to respond back to the PCM for the required information. So if any error happens or if the load of the alternator is different, alternator is going to report it back to the PCM. And this communication is going to happen all the time when engine is running. So if this communication is down, you will have the fault code exactly what you saw on the scan tool and PCM won't have any communication with alternator anymore. So it's quite easy. We just have one wire on the alternator. We can locate that wire to back probe it to use the oscilloscope to read the waveform. 
to see how we can do the diagnosis with waveform. All right, everyone, let's go for a reading the waveform. Uh, before setting up the oscilloscope, I check the connector on the alternative, which is just right down there. I check the connector and I had connection problem because connector on this alternator is kind of broken. That's why it came loose. And the problem that I had on this car was actually loose connection on the alternator connector. So quite easy. I just need to fix that connector and that's going to be it. But on many other circumstances, this problem is not going to be this much easy. So you need to move on to the next step to check the limb bus with oscilloscope. So that's why I have already set up my oscilloscope. So here's the oscilloscope and I'm going to use the scan tool as a display for oscilloscope. So I'm using channel one on the oscilloscope because on the limb bus, I only have one wire. On oscilloscope prop, I have one end which is right here which is inserted on the lean bus on alternator connector. And this is the ground which is provided from here. So on the oscilloscope, if I go for reading the waveform. All right, as you see, I am already getting the waveform because oscilloscope probe is already connected properly. But right now, connector on the lean bus is not properly connected. Let me just connect it back. All right, so this is the proper waveform that we should get from the lean bus on this lean controlled alternator. First of all, we need to do some adjustment, some setting on the lean bus to read it properly. Because sometimes if your last setting on the oscilloscope was something different, you might see a completely different waveform right here, which is going to be a little difficult to analyze. We need to do some setting for the voltage and time here. On my oscilloscope here, I have the voltage setting and here I have the time setting. Voltage setting is going to adjust the voltage on each division on this axis. And time setting is going to adjust the time on this axis. So you see each division right here, they are for the time, each division here for the voltage. So basically, if I want to make the waveform taller or shorter, I can adjust it by changing the voltage. For example, if I want to make the waveform shorter, if I press this one, right now I have 5 volts in here. It means each division on the voltage axis equals to 5 volts. And if I press this one, I'm going to make the waveform taller. As you see, I have 2 volts for each division. I can make it 1 volt as well, and waveform is going to be quite tall. So we need to go for something which is good for that specific waveform, because the waveform on the lean bus is going to be between 0 to 12. So the best thing is 2 volts for us to read a quite good waveform. And here we can change the time setting. If you click on this, you can select the time between all these options, or you can go between these two. So if you press this one, you're going to see less number of waveforms. If you click on this, you're going to see more number of waveforms. Something like this, what we see right now is quite good for lean bus diagnosis. We can stop the waveform from here to read it properly. The first thing that you need to figure out is if there is any waveform on the lean bus, because on this lean bus, on this network, we have one master node, which is ECM, and one slave node, which is alternator. So if there's anything wrong on the ECM side, you won't have any waveform. If there's any problem on the alternator side, you will have a little differences on that part that a slave node or alternator is responding back to the PCM. I will show you later on how a slave node can affect the waveform as well. We don't like to see any abnormality, any abnormal voltage spike, because if there is anything like that, maybe some external noise is getting reflected on the limb bus, creating that problem, or it could be from the limb bus nodes. On this one, we don't have any abnormality as well, but the base voltage and minimum voltage is quite important for us. So the base voltage on the lean bus should be something close to 12. So this is the base voltage, which can be considered as max voltage as well. And this is a minimum voltage. So you can read it from here, or you can just use this cursor. So on this cursor, I have two axes. So there is one diamond here that you can click on it and bring it down to this point for base voltage, just right here, 
and this one for the minimum voltage just right here so right now we can read the max and minimum voltage right here as you see y1 which is the base voltage is giving us 11.72 which is quite good because we are looking for something very close to 12 this one is acceptable and y2 which is minimum voltage is 800 millivolt that one is okay as well because we are looking for something less than one volt and most of the time when i've checked the lean bars i've got something between 700 to 900 millivolt this one 800 millivolt is quite good this shows that the max and minimum voltage they are both okay as well we don't have any problem on that side too if lean bus is shorted to ground you won't have any waveform you will have only one line very close to zero which is representing the short to ground if lean bus is shorted to battery you will have just one constant 12 volt battery right here which is representing the short to power as i explained if there's any problem on the master node which is pcm in this case you may have no waveform over here but for a slave node problem we may have two different cases one case is that the slave node is not responding back it could be for connection problem exactly like this car that i have today or in some other cases if a slave node has some sort of problem it's going to bring the entire network down in that case you check the connection you see the connector wiring everything is okay but there is no waveform but as soon as you disconnect the connector from the alternator you see the waveform is back on and you will get some waveform like this if you get the waveform right after disconnecting the connector on the alternator that is representing a fault on the alternator inside the alternator in this one i'm gonna start the waveform and look at the waveform right now i will disconnect the connector on the alternator and see how this waveform is going to change if slave node is not responding back i'm disconnecting right now disconnected as you see the waveform here is already changed i will connect it back so you see connected this is connected and here is disconnected so when we have no slave node responding you will have this kind of waveform and if a slave node is back on you will have this waveform so you can already compare the waveform a good and bad waveform on the lean bus when a slave node is responding or it's not responding so i'm going to start the engine right now to see when engine is running and alternator is generating the voltage what's going to happen over here so right now engine is running as you see waveform is slightly changed because previously we had the ignition switch on but right now engine is running as well if i stop the waveform and if we read the voltage you see the max voltage is already changed because alternator is charging minimum voltage stayed the same it's on 800 millivolts but max voltage went up to 13.84 right now which is representing that the alternator is charging right now so this is what we are getting when lean bus is operating properly and it's connected properly as well I'm gonna disconnect the connector right now on the lean bus to see how this waveform is gonna change when lean bus is not responding back. I'm going to disconnect right now. So disconnect it and connect it. You see the difference? So here disconnect it. So you will have this part of the waveform different from the previous one as you see slave node is not responding back that's why this part of the waveform is different and if i connect it back you see that this part is going to get back to normal it's going to get more wider i'm connecting it back so it's connected so as you see waveform is back to normal and a slave node is responding that part is quite helpful and quite important to understand how a slave node can affect the waveform so we can do a good troubleshooting on the lean bus all right guys thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video please don't forget to visit the channel page for more diagnostic videos